This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. And welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. I'm Ryan Carter sitting here with the great John King, the, I would say the Minnesota Wild's number one fan. And uh, being the number one fan, there's no way that you could have missed the home opener. You had to be there in person. Um, how was it? Like, did you, did you walk the green carpet? Because now being a host of Wild on 7th, you're kind of a big deal. Like, did you walk the green carpet? I'm such a big deal. No, you know what's funny is I, I wanted to be on the green carpet. I was going to rent a tux and like be like Joan Rivers, you know, talk to the guys. Like, what are you wearing tonight? You know, why did you choose not to wear socks? <laughs> like like an e-entertainment yeah. type of... Yeah, exactly. Why is <laughs> why are your pants so short and so tight? But uh, the Wild actually didn't want me to do that. They had other plans. So I, I tried to wedge Wait, myself. Wait, so did you actually pitch that? I did. I did. We talked about it in a brand meeting, to be fair, and then uh, I circled back to it because I was I was going to rent a tux, double down, be there. But I think uh, Gorg was out there, and they did something. I didn't actually go to the green carpet, which is I. It's so up my alley. I totally should have, but I missed it. Um, I'm excited to see the lookbook. But yeah, I I took in the hockey holiday. Uh, opening night is a special night. Um, it felt like fall. We got the game in kind of before the rain. You know, the the air was changing. It was smelling different. It was cooler. The Twins had just lost conveniently the night before. Sorry about that. And um, I thought it was just a wonderful evening in St. Paul, Minnesota. I uh, I think I closed down Herbie's. Um, I was there before and after. Um, and uh, I just had a really good time. Yeah, it was great. Everybody was out. It's like uh, Studio 54 of hockey in St. Paul on opening night. What should we call that if you go to Herbie's before and after the game? That's like that's like the USHL, you know. Yeah, it's a before and after. <laughs> yeah, it's the before. high school before and after yeah, it's and the uh USHL. Yeah, you're, And there are some there are some wild on seventh fans in Herbie's that do the exact same thing. You'll get a somebody will yell something as they leave, you know, before I do. Um, but uh, it was great. <laughs> so you stay till you hear something. I didn't throw any cans, so I, I got out of there pretty good. But um it was it was a good time. Uh, you know, started out. I thought. I wonder when you're up in the box, how much atmosphere. I saw your video on your story, and it looked like you got the really that same these light up towels that they did. Um, that was a pretty cool effect. Yeah, I it mean, was. I don't care if you had an iPhone eight. If you filmed the opening of that game, you looked like you were on another planet. You might as well have been in the Las Vegas sphere. It was That was a neat effect for whatever they paid for that. And then uh, Let's Play Hockey was interesting. You know, Darwitz didn't – I guess that was going to be maybe Jefferson, but he's injured, and they were kind of checking all these different people. They got Natalie Darwitz from the professional women's team. Uh, that's She's the GM for Minnesota. She didn't really do anything – crazy to get on the podium with Hawkinson and um, and Shaw and them. But, man, the love in the building. I don't know if you noticed that, but when, when they was her, it made me really think, you know, this PWHL, I mean, this might go to a Minnesota Lynx-type level. Like, the, the way the crowd reacted to seeing her and, this, and women's hockey kind of being on a pedestal, I really felt that the building – tipped its hat to the PWHL. I, I don't know what that's going to play out like, but there was some emotion there, um, even though she was pretty straight across the plate with her Let's Play Hockey. Yeah, we can't give her a spot on the podium. No, I, I don't. But think. the fans loved. I mean, well, they were seem, excited yeah, to yeah, see her. She didn't her. seem nervous. She no. did a good job. We got. We'll have to get her on the podcast because I'd love to chat and, and see what it's like to be the general manager of like a startup like that. Yeah, they don't even have a name. Like I saw one of the players coming into the parking yeah. lot at Tree, and I go. I'm like, hey, Sid, what's the name of your team? She goes, I don't know. Uh, I heard something, but I don't know. I'm like, that's amazing. Like, How cool would that be to be in those meetings yeah. and make that name? Yeah, that's the start. That's You only get to do that once. So My Natalie Darwitz story, she, she was – She'd play against the boys, and she wasn't just playing against the boys. She dominated us. This isn't like squirt and She peel. played against you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she broke my wrist. 
<laughs> well, then we definitely have to have her on yeah. the podcast. Well, I, for, uh, I forget what age we were at. Did she slash you and break your wrist? I think it was like a battle that maybe was a slash, but yeah. And then uh, my old man was like, I don't think anything's wrong. You should go and continue to play. So I played like a few games with it or a few days with it, and I went home like reduced to tears. It was like I, I could barely hold my stick. We <laughs> went and got x-rays, and sure enough, it was broken. Uh, but yeah, Natalie Darwitz outplayed yeah, she's a, me. Yeah, she's a badass for yeah, sure. Outplayed me, broke my wrist, laughed at me after, just dominated. She's an alpha. Like I think if she came on the pod, she might dominate us. This might be her pod after. Yeah. She's like, we're changing the name. <laughs> Darwitz on seventh. Dude, I tell you what, though. I, I had a – I was – I was distracted going into this one. I I know I've talked a little bit about, you know, coaching and tryouts and stuff. Oh, man. I had a tryouts, and I was watching on Live Bar in the hour before the pregame show. And it was an hour-long pregame show, so I got a couple of hits. I had scramble brain, green carpet, a lot going on. How did you do with knowing that you're you're selecting your team final decisions? Were you reduced on the broadcast? Do you think – how would you grade your effort? Uh, I mean, you're a pro, obviously, but how did you do for Bally's last night? Yeah, and that's a great question. I was I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like maybe I was. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> I gave uh, it I gave it my all, but I'll be honest. Like my heart at times was feeling for some of these players, and like I was nervous about like what you have to do. And um, but uh, no, I think the broadcast went well, and, and that, I think a lot of that was because the game was good. It was a fun game, wasn't it? Just to Gus was so good. I mean, so many. I, I don't know what the stats say on on high high danger. Re, high danger. It was nine seemed, to one after like the first two periods. I think it was the first forty minutes. High danger was nine to one. I felt like every shot that he was saving, they were like on the ice, far side of where he was, and he got a leg pad on it. The sound of his pads, like it, it, those were great shots that he was saving, and he was just. An absolute stud. And their shots, right, 14, 12, 15, 41 saves for Gus. You know, on our side, 5, 11, 5, right? So it was relentless. Florida is a really, really good hockey team, and they're without Montour, Ekblad, Sam Bennett, maybe another guy too. And I – holy – I mean, that was a – we kind of stole one there, I think. You ever go to the golf tournaments, the scrambles, and then they have like that big target up. You walk up to the tee box. Yeah, like the gong. And yeah, and then it's Velcro, and you hit a tennis ball into it. If you hit the target, you get to take home one of like the door prizes. It's going to be like a keychain or yep. one golf ball. That's what Gus was for me last night. Like the rebounds, there were times, couple times, Matthew Kachuk, like their guy, going downhill on the wild defense in a good spot where he's got his feet set ready to shoot and Gus makes the save and it sticks to him like he's that target like like it was kind of velcro y and do you think uh, he had a little Carter honey on him? It, like a little sweet, little tacky. A little a little tacky a little, little maybe uh, some pine, tree a hidden tree pine sap. Tar. Yeah. Some tree sap. Uh hey was Kachuk the guy that dove by the uh, He was. I love it. <laughs> so you're getting me number one here. Like Minnesotans have to they have to I mean they they hate this guy, but they would love him if so they played. You can't hate Matthew Kachuk. He is Matthew a Matthew Dumba. They I, th- I think Oh that's right. He have. he ripped his pack on the fight. But so Kachuk is a great American born Is that why you wore red, white, and blue today? He's a great American born prick. And that's what we need in hockey for the world. Remember the world Cup of Hockey will be back. We are going to play in the Olympics someday. So let's just, you know, Matthew's going to be on our side at some point. He, we kept him off the scoreboard last night. He didn't do anything to us. Um, but, yeah, he is. <laughs> when that dive happened, I'm like, that's got to be Kachuk. Uh, and I thought they would give him one, too. But he, he actually he always gets away with it, too. He's, like, over in the corner chewing his mouth guard. At one point, he came down. He was one-on-one with Gus just saying stuff to him and you know it wasn't good and when you're on the wild and you see that you have to just be like hey Kachuk's down there alone with our goalie because that just can't be good whatever he's doing yeah he is uh he's a he's a world-class pest that's for sure yeah and I mean it's 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 it is fun to watch yeah he gets under your skin uh go, let's go back to the, the prognostications or like our five like our, our bold predictions. yeah yeah I think it was 
<laughs> I, I still will double down. I think Dean's going to get fined this year. Like, he had to work to keep his cool <laughs> on that one where Kachuk dives. Like, you can see Dean's, like, getting a little hot. And then on the Boldy, no goal. That was just a bad call by the referee. Shouldn't have blown the whistle. And Boldy, he picks up that puck short side of the net and then throws it upstairs far side. It should have been a goal. He's mad about that one. Like, I think like a, there, I'm doubling down on that one. Like, Has, has his hair, is it still it's still a shag? Long. Okay. I, may, I, to, I don't know. I think I told you I made. I saw him, and without thinking, I was like, I said, I love your hair. <laughs> and I that's it, what you led with and it, but it just came out of my mouth because ah, i love your hair and then i just kind of he gave me this look like what do you mean almost like what's different i like i could have ruined it maybe it's like when you're in high school and you walk up to like the lunch table with the popular gals and you go to try to say what you want to say you're and like you have pretty and eyes and then you and just like and then instead you say something totally weird i really like your yeah you know you have you have nice hair yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, he he. Uh, I hope I didn't ruin that. I probably shouldn't have said anything. Just he let could it. Still apologize. Got to let that simmer. It's like when you see the line in a pull tab and you just set it aside. Let it simmer. I think we got his hair simmering. So he was he was a little bit of steam coming out of his ears. I, but he was reserved. Like he was reserved. You could tell that he's like, okay. I said coming into the year, I'm not going to blow a gasket. But it was like you, there were two huge scenarios where he was like, uh, and he had to work for it, but. Uh, we will see that that that's an interesting storyline. Another good piece of content that's going to end up coming out of that game uh, is a mic'd up with Pat Maroon, and um, I, I don't know. There, you could just see him, John, going back and forth with some guys on Florida, and we. I, I've watched Pat Maroon. I know him. I'm super stoked to be able to to get some audio of what like was actually being said and really get a, a good a good thought on how he is on the ice yeah and he he does he's one of those guys he's a true man's man where he just laughs at people yeah yeah you know like like, like even when you when you throw him a zinger he, he just somehow laughs. like taps it like he he dismisses it he just it makes you feel dumb for throwing that zinger he just laughs and the, he's an interesting guy to watch on the ice because he's a lurker so you got the two deweys just going crazy like thing one and thing two and and maroon is just like he, he just like lurking around, just waiting, and he really had, they had some nice shifts. He had, there was a few where they were just zinging it at the net, but um, yeah, he's going to be fun to watch, and it's a good guy to have on your team. You know, I mean, Marcus was also uh, throwing his body around last night. He he looked really. Yeah, he good. led the team in hits. He so looked, a couple ca- crazy stats out of it. I think Brock Faber led everybody in uh, in minutes. And what a night for the the boy, you know, first, first NHL goal. Uh, he gets his becoming wild episode that night. I mean, I mean, there, there's going to be a lot of love for Brock Faber I, in the state of hockey. But I talked to him media day here for some stuff. And he kind of said that he's not a social media guy. And there has been a, a lot of publicity for him. It was the Gus Bus commercial, his mom, the glasses mm-hmm. into becoming wild first goal. Like, a lot of hype coming in, playing alongside Brodine. And none of it looks like it's getting to him at all, which I think is a very positive thing. You know, like, he, he can have all this success early on, but I don't think the bubble's going to get so big to where it's, I'm talking about, like, his head or his confidence, to where it's going to pop. You know, like, he seems like a very level-headed dude. He's really down to earth. Even when we did that commercial, like, asking for his mom to be in it, I think most players, especially young players, might be like, I don't know, you know, or that, what are you doing? What, why are we doing that? You yeah. know, and, uh, and the glasses bit and stuff. And he was just, he's just great. You know, he, he shows up, he was wearing just a t-shirt and shorts and all the other guys are like, Brock, what are you, what are you doing? We're filming a commercial outside. We had to have the production guy gave him his sweatshirt. I had to give my jacket to the production guy. <laughs> We're getting Brock sorted, but, uh, he, uh, no, he's a, he's a good, uh, He's a good kid, and uh, and he's a he's a thick, uh, he's a big guy. You know, a lot of Wild fans are always talking about our undersized defense, and and Brock Faber, uh, he can trade some paint. Yeah, he's gonna win some battles. Yeah, he uh, he's not a small uh, gentleman, and great night. He's fun to watch out there. Um, we do probably have to get him to push that half shield. Down yeah, you know what I'm talking bit. about now? How yeah. he just tips it way up. It's Sid Crosby in 05. You yeah. know, it's like. Uh, you got to, I mean, especially with that, that, you know, NIL deal you got with the glasses company or whatever he has, you should probably pull that half shield over your eyes. You don't want to be, you know, wearing an eye patch. 
but he had a great night. It was Faber's night for sure. Yes, yeah, I mean the the power play got there. The penalty kill was good. Special teams. I think everybody got off to a good start. The Wild. I think there was a, again we're at practice, and there seems like there's kind of like a, a serious tone. Like okay, we got the job done last night, but at the same time maybe we got away with one. Florida was the better team, I think, and that's pretty impressive. Florida had seven guys. So they, I mean, they make it to the Stanley Cup final last year. They have seven guys. I know three of those regulars are injured that you mentioned, Ekblad, Montour. And, and Montour right is just an absolute I – mean, he, in the playoffs last year, just – They're game changers. He is unbelievable. Ekblad's like a Victor Hedman light. I mean, and Sam Bennett's just a pain in the ass. So that team is great, and they're only better with those three guys. Yeah, seven guys making their Florida debut. Like, they haven't played a game in a Florida sweater. And they played, like, a pretty solid team. They were fast. Forecheck the – but I mean, they that Four first check, period was paycheck. like that was what that game was. Yeah, they were relentless, and I mean, uh, Kirill couldn't find space. Like that line tried to get things going, they just couldn't. There was no room out there. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a good win, e- even though you're right, we stole it a little bit. But who cares? You know, yeah, was, who cares? And this is sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta take your breaks when they come. Like, okay, pressure relief, instantly penalty kill, perfect night. You know, yep. goaltender. Shut out. Perfect night. Power play. You get your goal. Four on three. Lucky bounce. Who cares? Take it. Power plays, you know, they're on the board. You know, they've they've got one in the net. No pressure. Boom. You know, there's a lot of things that were just terrific coming out of that game one. Uh, and the Wild have to be good. Uh, but let's uh, let's kind of forecast what's going on from here. But before we do, unfortunately, we're crossing the border. I got to travel. And the thing is, you can't bring fresh produce produce across the border. But one thing I can bring, because I do like these certain snacks, is a nice salty caramel. You know where I can get something like that, Kanger? Uh, Cub and uh, Jimmy's. Uh, I think Gus had some um, salted caramel dip on his jersey last night. I think that's potentially why the puck was sticking to him. Uh, I think he's got a sweet tooth, uh, and I think he probably headed over to the apple section at the produce department, saw the tubs of Jimmy's caramel dip, bought some, spread it on his gear, uh, maybe had some pretzels, maybe made some apple nachos, who knows, maybe some Swedish meatballs with caramel dip on it. Anything's possible, but you got to check this out. Go into your grocery store, look by the apples, find the Jimmy's caramel dip, change your life, Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. Don't you be messing with my dresses. Wow, that was good. You nailed it. And now, um, since we talked about what you're eating and all of those things, it's time for me to talk about the troubles yeah, at my so, home. Yeah, that's right. We go right into, we go from, uh, you know, the, the right side of the body mass index chart to uh, Auntie M's, your house is spinning again. There's a cow out your window. So what terrible thing happened? It did storm Nothing last night. Nothing has happened. It's all been good. It did rain all night <laughs> last night. So I'm sure, like, but we you do have, have the gutters a, you back have a on. flood, and, and uh, what else has happened? Your, we have all the gutters your... back on. We did have the storm damage, and I've got the new roof. The gutters are on. Everything's buttoned up, and I have to say the the process was smooth, and it was easy, and that's thanks to, to wild construction. So if you're one of those people that uh, had some of those hail storms come through your neighborhood check them out last thing you want us to worry over the winter uh, and, and the hail will do damage and it will show up a, a month two months later so make sure you check out wild construction's website wildconstructionmn.com they have uh, a couple of tools on there that can help you find out storms that roll through if you're in the area and they'll have somebody pop out. My guy, Freddie, he'll he'll jump up on the roof. Um, and if you've got some damage, they'll get you covered. So uh, check out our friends at wildconstructionmn.com. Wild on 7th has a brand new sponsor. We couldn't be more excited about them, Cub. If you're looking for some fresh, delicious milk, you're going to want to check out Cub. 48 hours from farm to shelf. You're not going to find that anywhere else. You're going to pay less. So head on into your favorite neighborhood grocery store, cub and get yourself some delicious milk lean into it and end up with a jake middleton sized milk mustache thank you for being here cub king it's time for the ac to be turned off the heat to be turned on and if you're looking for a place to get your ac system tuned up look no further than aquarius home services in fact the time to buy is right now uh, they're in the midst of their fall blowout sale so if you want comfort and unbelievable prices right now they've got a 25 percent discount on whole home heating and cooling cooling systems 
And uh, if, hey, heck, if you need water, they've got whole home water solutions by Kinetico too. You got to act now. The deal doesn't last forever. Uh, get your home heating and cooling systems checked out. Or if you're looking for just worry-free water, they've got that there too. But it all starts with a free water analysis. For that, call our friends at AquariusHomeServices.com. I should say check them out at AquariusHomeServices.com. They're earning the right to be recommended. Good work. Hey, another prediction thing. So Wild Joe Radio was big on Rossi. He said five goals, first 10 games, et cetera, et cetera. This kid, man, uh, I watched this goal. It's uh, from the – it's like from behind the net. He puts it top shelf. It's opening night, monkey off your back, throw the monkey stuffed animal onto center ice. Rossi's rolling, you know, 23-24. And then they take the goal away for offsides. I'm like, this kid – between the COVID situation with his heart, you know, back in the day, last year, 20 games, one point. I mean, this guy needs a break. You know, he must, when he sees the NHL shield, he must just be like, screw you. Like he, he needs, he, it just, it's going to happen for him. He, he looked good. Um, he just got to keep the faith. And I think the whole, I think the state of hockey is really rooting for for Rossi. I I do. I think they're this because he, he, you know he he's working his ass off. It's just time. And he deserves it. Give him a break. You know, like almost like Toronto should have been like, hey, it does look like offsides, but you know the backstory of this Rossi kid. Let's just let this one yeah. go. All right, put one up for the wild and just put one up for Florida too. We'll yeah, call it exactly. Either, you know. Yeah. But uh, I I was trying to rack my brain because part of me recalls like a rookie last year scoring their first goal and getting it taken away. But I it can't, was it was him. I think it was Rossi, right? Yeah. He uh, I think he tipped one out of the air, and it was a goal. It was his first goal, and he hit it out of the air, and that was offsides. Yeah. I think this has happened to him. This twice. has happened before. He scored twice. two goals and they're not counting. And then remember when he finally got his first point, it was like he he did a crazy assist to like Kirill. And then when they cut to Rossi, he was just like, <sighs> he wasn't even like happy. No, I think they took his goal away last year too. And I believe he tipped it out of the air. I, have to I, I also it. think it's possible that it maybe happened to Sammy Walker too, where his first goal yep, was you're right. taken away. You're right. So and that I just couldn't sucks. think if, if it happened to both or one, or if my my memory's playing tricks on me. But I think I think it's possible. We got to talk to him. For us, he has had two goals, both taken away. And I'm gonna we got to figure out who is offsides on those. If it's Marcus, every time we're gonna ha- we're gonna have to have uh, you know a little chat. That's, That's not good. Drag a foot. Drag a foot. Hey, <clears throat> what do you think of the Wilds? Um, so in the offensive zone, and and we were being attacked all night last night. So it's a hard game to look at. But they. Uh, there's a lot of this east west you know it's almost like everybody's looking for these break the box passes across you got a lot of kind of the esp zuki Kirill stuff going on which is impressive I, there's so many times in the game where they'll just like do a behind the back two line pass to each other and you're like geez freaking frack but i i'd like to see the team uh, actually look at the goaltender and, and shoot a little more. It seems a little cute, uh, but maybe it's just early in the season they're trying to figure some stuff out. Do you notice that? I see a lot of a lot of side passing and hero passing, and I just, like, shoot it, you know? Honestly, what I took out of last night's game, well, and there's always two things. There's the underlying narrative that you should never be too high, too low, especially early in the season. So don't be peacocking after a 2 nothing win when the other team played well, but also don't get too down – if you're Florida, like put yourself in Florida shoes. They played great. Yeah, don't be down, you know. But uh, with that as the baseline thought, I think the Wild were trying to f- have, having the force plays because there was just no room for them and they couldn't manufacture and they, they did get away from probably the grind shifts, like their identity a little bit and the lines that got to it. So like Rossi's goal. That was a two-man four check. They turned the puck over, throw a puck to a guy that was at an inside position on his player coming up the ice, and that's what led to the goal. That's where they were going to find room. I think they vacated that. They're trying to use the perimeter of the ice to find space and then be able to make a pretty play. They Just Florida checked so hard, and they were so fast that those things, they could never string two, three passes together to make a sequence and, and find somebody open to make a play. I think they were forcing them a little bit for sure, but I think more than anything, you just have to tip your cap to Florida and be like, man, like, they had legs. They they had unbelievable legs for game one travel. Like they were ready to play. 
the goal uh, was a power play goal, the Eck goal. So, and that's kind of like to me vintage wild hockey. So the puck goes on net, rebound, and Eck just is in the snot bubble, blue paint. You know, quick stick move in the net. Um, what did you, I? I still don't know. I can't tell what's what King is doing on the power play. I don't know exactly how he's changing it or or what. What did you make of the the power play last night? I, I thought I was very intrigued by the penalty kill, which we can get to. But do you have a sense for what his strategy is on the power play? Get the puck to Carell. <laughs> I do think that there there's going to be that's not a, a concentrated strategy. effort that'll work. Carell had 17 power play goals last year. That was like fifth or sixth in the NHL, somewhere around that range. And they they want to get him more. Yep. So it, does that mean 20? Does that mean 25? I think obviously the more the merrier. But I think there's going to be an effort to put him in a spot where he can score. And then if you look around the league. There's not a lot of the bumper position where he was for the majority of the year last year that scores a lot of goals. So TJ Oshie will pick a couple up here and there, but he's not getting 22 power play goals. You look at the guys that led the NHL last year, that's Dry Seidel with like 32. I think Chuck was up there, 18, Pasta, um, those kinds of guys. And the difference is those are all flank guys that can hover on the backside from kind of the post to the dot if you're drawing a straight line and find an open area, and then when the puck comes over there, shoot it. That's where the scorers are. You know, think Alex Ovechkin. That's where they put him in. And if they're going to get Kirill from 17 to the mid-20s, that's where he's going to play. So I think that they're going to try to have the puck in his hands as much as possible, but also make sure that the, the bouncing act is they don't want – the positions to be stagnant. They want movement and fluidity, but at the same time, they want Kirill to be in that spot where he's on his forehand in a one-timer situation on that left. So you're going to see less of him doing his loop-de-loops in I, the. I think that they that they would like that, yeah, and and they want him to just be ready to score more. And that doesn't mean that he has to sit there and camp out like Ovechkin. It's going to be different, uh, but that's that's what the power play is trying to accomplish. I almost think in some ways Kirill would rather pass to someone and have them score than to score himself. You know, I mean, if you kind of look, he really distributes. You know, he likes to make the pass. Well, that's what's crazy about him is he's a dual threat, and he's one of those guys that can, if he prioritizes, like McDavid did last year. McDavid prioritized scoring goals, and he and he went into the season and he put up a ton, right? Where he in the past has had thirty goals and a hundred and ten assists, or I mean, I don't know the numbers, but somewhere around there, right? A hundred apples, and he wanted to score more last year, so he scores fifty and gets eighty assists. There's but there's a give and take. I think that's the same with Kirill. He's going to be around that hundred point mark. It's just what's the composition going to be, and I think he. I think he's probably accepting the fact that he's more valuable, and, and I think the staff is too. This is how I see it, as a goal scorer, as a finisher. He can just say, yeah, I'm a playmaker, and, and all of a sudden set everybody else up and, and get 80 apples and score 20 goals. But I think it's more impactful if he has like a 50-50 kind of campaign. you know. And yep. um, I, I think that they'll continue to encourage him to shoot. And at times, maybe that is going to have to take a coach going over there being like, hey, shoot it. You know, like, I know you want to you want to make a pretty play, but shoot it. I did find myself in the last night at the game asking someone, what's the Russian word for shoot? Uh, because uh, you kind of – there were times where it's like, just fire it. I One thing that I noticed that was so cool last night was when Faber scores that goal, the look on Boldy's face. Yeah, he doubled down on it. The look on X. I mean, like – I mean, there's this is a group of guys that uh, most of them are locked up uh, for a long period of time. They feel safe. You know, they, they're friends with each other. You know, Billy's put his core. The load-bearing walls are all kind of – they're all in. And to see the reaction when he got that goal was just awesome. Um, it was almost like a college hockey moment. You know, when I watched the two of them hugging, I'm like, these are guys that are they're about the same age, you know, and uh, – he, they were just so happy for him. It was pretty cool to see that. I mean, sometimes you lose that in pro sports, but uh, you must have noticed that on the broadcast. Too. Oh, yeah. I mean, you saw Boldy and his reaction initially as he met Faber yeah. at the blue line. Then they go through the knuckles line, 
and Boldy felt like he didn't do it enough justice, so he, he goes after him again and gives him like another solid squeeze, big smile, like you know, like a congrats. This is so great, happy, like awesome, you know. And that 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 is cool to see. Uh, let's take a quick look at the the schedule coming up because I mean it's in. The Wild have to feel good. You look at last year, the start that they had. They got behind the eight ball. Dean Everson talked about it. Like, hey, it was let's, horrible. Let's not worry about game two, three, four. Let's just make sure we get off to a good start. They win the game. Didn't play good. Who cares? Take your bounces when they come. No such thing as an ugly W. Yep. So th- they've got it, and now they're going to hit the road, go to Montreal, uh, Toronto on Saturday night. Uh, Will that home. be hockey night in Canada? I think it might be. Okay. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough on the road, no question about it. Uh, but they've they've got a tough sled coming up. But if they can split on the road, find a way to pull a couple points out of it, get back home, then we'll have the Kings, I think. And That's another tough team. The Kings are nasty. And then you got the Blue Jackets before we record again. So we're going to go – you're going to have the Bidet in Montreal. Mm-hmm. you got Hockey Night in Canada Saturday against – tough game against uh, Kevin – and the rest of them on Thursday from the Kings, and then the we don't really know what to make of the Blue Jackets. I suppose they had the whole coaching change, Johnny Hockey. Hopefully they're bad, but we'll find out. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to. What do we want to be? That'll be five games into the season. Uh, I guess we want to be at least three and two or something. By the yeah, time three and we two. I think three and two next, is right? acceptable. Uh, anything like three one and one is fantastic. Yep. You know? um, then that's totally doable. I think it's probably a good time to throw it. I, our guest uh, owner, Craig Leopold, it was, it, I mean, it, it was fun. It was. This is great. So when we heard he was coming on, I, I had, my initial reaction was like, this is like when your, your teacher or something is having lunch with you. Like, I was more nervous about it. <laughs> it's like undercover boss coming to the podcast. Like, there's nothing good that can happen from this, right? Either. He just doesn't. The risk is not worth the reward. Yeah, I'm like, this is not going to be good. It's he's going to. I'm going to be wearing the same clothes I had on last night, and he's he's going to notice that or something. But but he was uh, he was just awesome. He was almost Billy G like yeah. in terms of first of all, he's a fan. Um, he was funny. Um, he kind of got you with they the, me. Yeah, and he just was a. I mean, he's a guy we should have back. I know. I, I think I, I, I regular. I think fans are really going to like getting to know the owner because I don't think you really know the owner. Like, you don't know a lot about Craig Leopold, perhaps. And, As a person. No. And, yeah, that's why and this is great. He is – this is a really enjoyable interview with an amazing Billy Guerin story that I yes. still just love. And, uh, yeah, I think people are really going to enjoy this one. Yeah, here's our boy, Craiger. Whoa. All right, let's, so let's set the scene on <laughs> uh, on the the waters that Craig just dropped on us right now. This is the most first world problem ever. You explaining this is just hilarious that this has bothered you, this Fiji water. <laughs> Why don't you try to explain this to the common... Because you the have common, to explain it. I don't know to it. To the lunch pail listeners of Wild on 7th, why don't you explain how, how hurt you've been by this water situation? No, it's not. Well, okay, but so you walk... I've, we, I talked about this already, but you walk onto the airplane, you go left, that's where ownership management coaches sit. You go right and you walk through the players where it's all Louis Vuitton bags and everything. You know, it's like sushi. And then you get to the back of the plane where we sit and then like it switches. So you, we sit in the back and you look up in the front and it's like there's palm trees, Fiji water, sushi and everything. And then in the back is, you know, you'll get a carrot stick, some uh, celery sticks. You get Delta branded water. PB and J. PB and J. If you actually, if you steal one while you're walking past, True. <laughs> combos. Yeah. Lunchables. Yeah. So you get all that stuff, <laughs> and then the only time you get a like a sniff of any of the people up there and like the land of the palm trees is when they come back to use the bathroom in the back of the airplane. Yeah, so they're giving you a whiff. Yeah, we're always like, we want <laughs> we want more of those guys in the back. Can we just get like the Fiji water in the back of the airplane? We want to draw these these great people back to to the back with us. Um, so it's well, fun. you're in the club now, Ryan. Yeah, that's what, and it's great. It's so funny. So I made a bit out of it, and we just have fun on the airplanes with it. But Craig, Craig so I brought in some Fiji water for you because so, I want you to feel at home, and <clears throat> I just want you to know that the the area where the palm trees are is not that great a place. <laughs> It's not like you guys are slumming it way. No, that's back, what I said. It's at not at all. No. <laughs> island, like island vibes. Like that. Yeah. 
Oh, that's so good. Should we warm up the boss in our standard fashion cards? Yeah. Ooh. Well, so, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do okay, that. Okay, so. This is a rapid fire. Wild owner, Craig Leopold. This is how players come into the pod. We're going to treat you exactly good. the same. Um, yeah. Like, we know gonna, you own the team, but we want to know you a little bit. Yeah, okay. so we're going to go back and forth. And the goal, it's called rapid fire. So just answer quick or just say pass. Okay. You know, goalies take about 40 minutes to do this. Of it's course no they would. So, all right, nickname. Craiger. Who do you text the most? My son. Weirdest thing in your overnight bag? Tylenol PM. Because <laughs> I got to go to sleep at night. <laughs> do you have your own Netflix accounts or uh, do you like share them or maybe pirate from your kids? Uh, all three. <laughs> Seriously, all three. Yep. So you're one of those ones yeah, that I've got. Like, we got tons of stuff. They use my Netflix. I use their Hulu. That's right. Yeah, that's good. right. I'll get a call from from one of my sons, and I'm using his account. I just bought to buy a movie, and he'll text me and say, "Stop using my account." <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> all right. What do you listen to in the car? Uh, Sirius XM. Eh, wrong answer. Wild on seventh. Uh, but we'll. we'll oh, oh, well, I don't get wild on seventh in Wisconsin. That's the only time I'm in the car. Okay, got it. Uh, pet peeve. People who snore. Uh oh. It's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? Uh, Herbie's on the park. Cha ching. First real job. Uh, paper boy. You're going, you get a green light, as the players say. You get to have a big night in any NHL city. Which city would you pick? Nashville. Wow. Do you, are you on social media? Yes. Like, what's your favorite follow? I don't follow. <laughs> <laughs> He's a leader. I, I peak. Yeah, I'm a leader. I am, I, I don't, uh, I don't have an account that people can get to because sure. I just, I, I don't, I don't want it. Uh, hockey jersey you had as a kid, or any sports jersey if it wasn't hockey? Gretzky. Would you rather play one game for the Wild or like own them for a thousand? You know what I mean? I'd rather play one game for the Wild. Nice. That's a, we got to come back to that. Game uh, seven. What's game, your pre, yeah. What's your pregame meal like? Do you have any like, you know, do you nap and stuff on? Yeah. Game okay. Day? No, uh, no pregame meal. I nap. I have to take a nap. I've been doing it for twenty years for every game. I'll take a nap. I'll wake up at if the game starts at seven. I'll wake up at six ten. Take a shower, have a cup of coffee, walk over to the arena, and go to the suite and watch the game. God. You are ready to Every play game. a game. You are Every ready. Game. You have the routine down. Nobody sits on the left of me. Nobody sits on the right of me, and nobody sits in front of me. Yeah, we're coming back to that. Okay. I, I sat in your okay. seat one game. You were out okay. of town. Um, okay. So whoa. whoa, yeah, it was. By the way, it's the coolest. We'll we'll talk about this. So, what's your go-to drink at the bar? Brandy old fashion. Wasn't Uncle Nearest? Uncle Nearest. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Nearest. A brandy old fashion with Uncle Nearest. That's so it's it. a whiskey old fashion. I stand corrected. That's it. Uh, would you rather have Middleton's mustache or Maroon's hair? Maroon's hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect weekend. What are you doing? Staying home, doing nothing. The car doesn't even leave the garage. That's such a good answer. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, cat or dog guy? <laughs> oh, God. This this could go south. That's almost insulting. He's got four dogs, I think, right? I'm, we are at four dogs. We were at five, but so I'm a dog guy. Never owned a cat in my life. I couldn't trust a cat guy. Um, hidden talent. There's a reason that it's quiet right now. <laughs> I don't know. He's like, I would say he's, he's like, got a pretty good game face. He's like, will I? Will I get waters on me? I can't think no, of anything I can like, share with you guys. That's okay. Yeah, that's Gift good. card from any store. Uh, Starbucks. What's harder to buy, a sports team or a, a sports car? I feel like... Oh, ca- well, uh, there's no doubt, a sports team. I feel like sports car, to buy you a walk car, in, there's yeah. so many hoops yeah. you have to jump through. No. no. What, like what hoop? What hoop? Yeah, to buy a car? Well, I don't know. you got to talk to 17 people. You go in, you talk to a sales guy, then you talk to a manager, then you talk to somebody else, then you go in and talk to a title person, then you come out and you're like, can I just write this check and drive home? Like, you I go can- right to the owner of the dealership and say, what is your best price? Yeah. Is that, and yeah, it's different? That, and it's different. It's, it's going to be team. his best price. <laughs> I, I have a hunch that Craig buys cars differently than we do. <laughs> it's just a, a little hunch. Um, uh, last thing you binged watch. 
Like TV or movie? Oh, God, I'm so bad at remembering. I binge all the time. Uh, uh, it's something on Netflix. I mean, it could be. I watch, F1? I watch you watch that Formula One stuff? I, I've watched the F1. I've watched all the golf stuff. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That's a good that, that was I've all been watching all the good stuff. Later, all good lately. stuff. Yeah. All good stuff. Yeah. Who plays you in the movie? Uh, in the movie that I'm in? Yeah. It's called Robert Redford. Oh, God. I, you know what? I, Is that a parents? 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that a like parents? Back in Butch Cassidy days. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that a what? Is that based on a parents? Oh, <laughs> Redford's so thought, cool. Redford's yeah, a new like I just love the guy. Like, I, I feel mean, like I you're Mark Wahlberg. You could be Mark Wahlberg. Oh, Mark Wahlberg. Wall- <laughs> don't. That, that's, that I love. Are you kidding? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got any more? Or I, I, I know. It's, uh, he passed the test. Yeah, he's, he's warmed up. So I wanted, So yeah, I had the – He had his nap. We got ready. Away. I had the privilege. Um, you're, a, you're a traveler, and you were out of town for – I think you were out of town for a home game. I don't know why this happened, but – so. Craig's seat home at game? the wild game. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a home game. Maybe it was, it was a like a season game. It was probably a preseason game. So Craig's seat is the greatest seat in the entire XL. Okay. So you're in a suite and you go down, and I think his seat is on the far right in the suite in the front row. But the coolest thing he has, first of all, he's right at center ice, uh, but he's got a monitor down low that's delayed by like 10 seconds from the in-camera, in-arena feed. So you're watching the game, and let's say Maroon, uh, something happens when Maroon's tangled up with somebody in the corner. You don't know what went down. Look down, 10 seconds late. It's the coolest. How did you set up that seat and uh, just talk about, you know, your kind of game day routine? Well, the, the I mean, the I love the TV there. It's like I've got to have something to watch as I'm watching the game, and I got to be able to watch the replay. So it's just it's Bally's that is that that has on a you know a 10 second delay. Perfect. And and it just you know I can see whatever's going on, and and you know particularly on penalties and uh, you know and icing, you know who did it, all that stuff, and who scored, things like that. So I I watch a lot of the game looking at the uh, at the TV. The issue with the open suites is I'm a um, I'm kind of a demonstrative person as you guys are watching me now, and I I move my hands and I you know if the puck is on to the you know left of me then I I'm, I'm facing that direction, and if it's to the right I'm I'm moving and um, I I just have to have my space. I don't. I am not a social person. People who watch the games with me are 90% of the time they are just my buddies and friends, and they know I'm there to watch the game. Intermission will will kibitz and we'll talk and you know do you know do whatever we want to talk about. But but during the game, it's it's just it's all about the game. Um, I I always have a rolled up. Uh, program. Yeah, I was wondering going to ask yeah. you what that is. Is yeah. it the stat sheet? It's is the it- stat sheet. It's the stat sheet. And the stat sheet, as you guys know, gets thicker and thicker and thicker as the season goes on. So tomorrow night, stat sheet is going to be like three pages. And usually I wrap it around and I, you know, I'm hitting my hand or I hit the seat <laughs> in front of me or, you know, something like that. I'm, I'm not going to have that luxury to be able to do it. The other thing is that those stat sheets have staples in them. Mm-hmm. Oh, you cut and, your hand. Oh, maybe. man, I've got little staple cuts on my hand from slamming it on. One time. What gets uh, you to slam it the most? Sorry to cut you off. Uh, t- t- um, Bad penalties? Losing face-offs five times in a <laughs> row and uh, against Dallas, and then they score on the power plays. Uh. That will for sure cause me to slap something hard. <laughs> I broke the TV, the TV that's in front of me yeah. that when I was in Nashville. I, I did exactly that, and I hit the screen of the TV with the paper thing. And it just shattered the TV, and boy, did I feel really bad. That's yeah. aggressive. <laughs> that was really. That's almost upset. a. That's more of a horse racing behavior with the rolled up kind of. Yeah. You're at the yeah. finish yeah. line, and uh, so how do you balance being a? So, somebody said to me once in like a business thing, like don't get too high, don't get too low. Even as we do the podcast, we try to ride through the season. How do you uh, like when the wild lose or win? Are you super emotional? Can you flush it after the game, or like, are you 
pissed off or like until they play again if they lose. Not okay. So right immediately after the game, if we lose, like you know, everybody can clear out of the suite. And Matt Maka, our CEO, always hangs back, and he and I and maybe Jeff Pellegrim will be the last guys there, and we'll open up a, you know, a a, a bottle of beer or something, and just kind of talk it over and. And I'm not a happy guy. I'll just know as I'm walking back to the St. Paul Hotel where, like, where I have an apartment, nobody will look at you. You know, they, their their eyes are down. Yeah. You know, I'm nobody's friend. You got just, blood on your hands from the staples. You're you're exactly. wandering through Rice Park like everybody right. else in Rice yeah, Park. Right, so. like everybody else. <laughs> I just walk in and I go upstairs. That's it. When we win – it is it is the biggest high. We we go down right away. We'll go to usually Herbie's and have a have a pop afterwards, and the place is packed and everybody's high fiving. And I mean, it's just like euphoric, and we love that part. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that. So you have another. So at Herbie's, there's a table in the corner when we win. That's almost like your second tradition. You have this amazing seat with the TV down low, and then you've got this kind of corner table at Herbie's. So you do not go if if the Wild lose, you don't go to Herbie's and sit at that table. Is no, that I right? will. I will sometimes if it's a weekend. Yeah, yeah. If it's a weekend, I'll usually go there, but it's an entirely different feeling. I mean, you're going there to drink Uncle Nearest, a double of <laughs> Uncle Nearest with, on the rocks. On the rocks, just like one ice cube and bring the second one you know pretty quickly but when we win it's just a different it's so, a different feel it's a good segue so what's your ownership style you know like are you like do you have meetings with billy and say you know like we need to win more face offs so you just let him do his thing or like how does that go like after a disappointing game like we, we we do talk a lot and and it's 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 mostly Billy calling me and you know either you know talking about the game a little bit and you know who was good and he'll he'll give me an update on somebody who got hurt perhaps and uh, but no my style is you know he if if our face offs are bad you know he knows it and um, you know we we don't talk about players really we'll just talk about the you know how everybody was feeling after the game what are the coaches thinking. Uh, it's not so much about what we did wrong because he knows it. He doesn't need to be reminded by me. And, um, you know, and that's the fun. I mean, I enjoy talking with him because he, he kind of just brings me under the tent of what's, you know, what's happening behind the scenes and how people are feeling. And, and you know, ultimately it's only about the next game when we get down to it. What's it like when you've got somebody like Billy handing out million dollar contracts like their Tic Tacs the last couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> you get well, a contract. Let me say, you I, get a contract. I, I've been hovering around him for like the last two weeks, oh, hoping yeah. that just something falls out of his pocket. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll pick it up right I, now. I, I keep telling him we don't. You know, the, the money tree is bare. Yeah, and uh, he he under he understands it. You know, uh, you know we we talk about people that he's thinking about signing and how long it would be and how much they are and I mean he's he's a he's an incredible communicator just just informs you of, of what's happening so there are no surprises and 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 I just ask I mean do we have the money for it do we have the cap space and what does this mean you know down the road sure. and um, uh, but he's got a great group of people that surround him that are advising him on these contracts. So Billy told me in part of your guys' relationship building is you'll have weekends together where you just spend time and do whatever it is that you guys do. But then he also said sometimes he gets to play the owner and you're the general manager. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> that does happen occasionally. So we'll <laughs> be going off playing. somewhere. And I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I know. It's a great role play. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're going on, on a long road trip and we've got a couple days off. He says, okay, let's play this. I'll be the owner. You be the GM. I said, okay. And he goes, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, see, it doesn't make you feel very good, does it? Uh, yeah, we do, it's kind of a we, – we have a great relationship. I've, I mean – So I've, it's all in humor. He's it's all in humor. Fun. Yeah. All in humor. He, so he's such a breath of fresh air, Billy. Like uh, even when we do the advertising stuff, just to have a guy that just has a belly laugh – 
And it's like, this is great. You know, like an outburst, a genuine outburst. He's just fun and, and high energy. Do you have any Billy stories you've traveled with him? Like, like what's a, a Billy-ism or like uh, just maybe anything funny with uh, Mr. Garen? You don't have to do him yeah, so, dirty. We, we no, see him Billy, a lot during the season, and he's a scary man. Billy's so. the alpha, and it's rare that he's not, right? He's, he's the alpha almost everywhere he goes. Right. So uh, the the last couple of years, uh, we, we bring a large part of the staff up to our place in northern Wisconsin, where Lake Owen is the lake that it's on, and Billy will come. And the last two years, he has put my wife's head in a headlock Uh as as they're we're doing some karaoke or doing something and it's later in the evening and and he always forgets and Kara his wife reminds him you know you did put Helen in a headlock last night and he and he goes no (laughs) so uh we do remind Billy of that occasionally that is I mean we could just stop the pod right now that's the greatest thing ever (laughs) no (laughs) No, Ellen? I didn't. I know. Really? The, best part I is did. the best part is it's not one time. No, it's but the twice. best is we, two years. The best is we've all been there too. Like, wait, so tell me, like, so how was she? How did it go? You know? Oh, it's just <laughs> great. Helen's, yeah. uh, Helen will go along with anything. Yeah. Yeah. You do the hey, why don't we all say our favorite part of last night? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should do that sometime. Like, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. What well, was fun? So, um, uh, not only have you been investing Tic Tacs and, I mean, millions in the players, uh, but there's a lot of improvements around the rink, too. You want to talk about some of those with us, like the the, the club level? I was able to taste a lot of the food on the – Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we're uh, – well, we uh, there are a lot of things going on right now that we're trying to – real busy getting – complete i was going up the elevator down by the uh, locker room this morning and it were filled up with electricians and all of their yeah, equipment and they're trying to get it all done so we've got some we've got some new areas upstairs that are kind of exciting you know anybody coming in needs to walk around and see all the different options that we have now in in the food so we've got different types of food in the arena um you know it's it's uh it you know this is all about entertainment and exposing our fans to something new and different and and we've again we think we've done that this year there's a one spot on the club level and it's i've got to work the games but if i were a fan i would love this where it's like a it's on a tap room it's like a tap wall where you'll they'll have like six or eight beers on tap and you kind of just put your id your credit card in and then you get your mug and you can just go up to it and you can serve yourself serve yourself serve yourself you you put your card up and then it tracks it and it knows that you have like a 12 ounce cup you put your cup under and it fills your cup up with the beer wow i walk off your beer is empty you walk up you do it again or however it works so yeah yeah, that's gonna be that's awesome yeah it will be awesome you could go through try them all there's probably i I doubt there's gonna be much for line it should move briefly yeah yeah no transaction it's all already loaded you just grab it and go and that's what's happening today that's kind of the new thing and and we're going to be going more and more and more into that is is you know no transactions and amazon is getting real big in this and and enabling us to have situations that you just go into a to a store and you buy what you want and it and if you put your fingerprint or your handprint in before you go in you'll they'll send the beer they'll send the uh the bill to you you know what else has been great uh that i don't know that we talked enough about at the end of last year but after the audio system went in yeah like it was very noticeable yeah. the improvement in the audio and the building and everything yeah um and so there was parts of the press box where we couldn't hear stuff because the speakers were all pointed yep. down and things like that but now like i hear everything great i don't know what it's like in the owner's suite with it's stat unbe- pack it's a to- it's a night and day experience you can after after the games you can never really hear the interviews that would occur on the yeah. bench afterwards. Now you can hear everything that's being said. And, you know, when they're interviewing Kirill, you can – no, you really can't understand that. <laughs> still working but he on that. Speak just But fine. he's getting yeah. better. He yeah. is really getting better. And I, I, I say that just as a joke. He is, it's, it's amazing how his English continues to get better. Improve. Yep. Yeah, so the other thing is, like, with the, the sound in the rink sometimes, if they turned it up, it would just be, like, louder, louder. in your yep. ear, kind of. Yep. Now, like, you can feel it a yep. little bit, I think, which which I like that. You know, like, you feel the music yep. in your chest yep. a little bit, and it, yep. it changes a little bit. So I love that. Uh, that was a great addition. Have yep. you been to this new, the custom one on the glass? We recorded a 
pod in the on the glass club last year. I think they rebuilt that. Have you seen they that? They did yet? it. They just finished it. So the answer is no. I yeah, like not. today or something. It's or, yeah, it's a it's a construction company that is the new sponsor. So yeah. I'm, I'm I mean I think they've just completed it and we're going to have an event there. I think tonight. Yeah, I so, want to see yeah, that see too. I don't. I can't imagine what they did with that. Hey, as as an owner, are you a fan? Like, how does that work? Right. So, do you have favorite players or if you you know it's playoff time and you're like well I can count on these two guys I'm not sure about these two guys like how do you balance fandom and ownership well I I've I've been asked that question um and I don't answer it very well because um it it is a really hard to do I mean during the game I am only a fan I am watching it because I appreciate the game. I appreciate how the players play, and so I'm. It's all about being a fan, and so and that's why I don't like people other than my inner group being with me. Because if I complain about a player or say something, I'm doing it only as a fan. And when the game's over with, I still love the player. Um, So you know, but after the games, you know, and and you know, when I'm working. Yeah, it's a uh, you know it's a business and we run it as a business. But but when I'm at the games, uh, I am I'm there only as a fan, and that's how, that's the way I enjoy doing it. Uh, Carell got the the A this week, which is just so exciting. And um, what what have you what can you tell us about '97? You've you've had adventures trying to get him out of countries and all sorts of things <laughs> through the years. What uh, uh what what do you love about um your new your new captain? I love his passion. I love that he. Yeah, you can see it, right? Like you, you can, can see, see it. it. Yeah. You can see he, he's a That's hard why he's worker. He's the right guy for it. Yeah, he's he is the right guy to have the A. Yeah. But and, and and the beautiful thing when Billy, you know, talked to him about it, uh, he he wanted it. He thought he was ready. He was ready to to be that leader. He's the probably the hardest working guy on the ice. Uh, all the time, you guys see that. You know it. There's no area, there's no part of the rink that he won't go in to get the puck. Uh, he's hard worker. He 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 wears it on his sleeve. We, you know, he really runs. He's the engine that runs our team. I think I read that the other day. I think Billy made that comment. It's so true. Um, so for him to really feel like that he wanted the A, I think is fantastic, and I think it shows his commitment to to being the leader that we all want him to be. You know, Billy's uh, he's a confident guy, but he's also an honest guy. And we had him on the podcast, and I asked him once about the deal that he signed to Kirill. Because if you mm-hmm. rewind, Kirill didn't have arbitration rights. He didn't have like a vehicle to yeah. get leverage yeah. in negotiating his contract. Yeah. And then Billy must have had to come to you and be like, hey, I'm putting everything on the line here. This guy, five by nine million dollars, like you, you have to trust my gut on this one. Like, is it, how did that? How did that go? That that was uh, that was the longer discussion. <laughs> that, uh, because you're right. I mean, he didn't have any arbitration rights, and I think, you know, what what well, th- this was this is the long play with Carell. Mm-hmm. We don't want him to ever feel like we're. We're cutting corners when it comes to him, or we're not treating him as the superstar that we believe he is. And so rather than go to a bridge deal that, you know, could have been two or three years, and we could have we could have gotten it for five. We could have gotten it for anything because yeah, so, he had no rights. So, like, you go to Anaheim right now. Trevor Zegras, he's not the same player yeah. as Kaprizov, but that's what they're doing with That's him, right. That's right? right. Like, they're saying, I, I, I get you want eight years and a lot of money, but I'm going to give you two years at five million bucks, yeah. you know. And now tr- prove it to us in yeah. the next two years. And then, what and then you'll get paid. And Billy, or the yeah. philosophy was, like, we don't want him thinking that we're, we're cutting him with a razor all the time, shaving it off. Yep. We want him to know that we value him from the very start and that we're invested in him from the beginning that's that's the philosophy and billy would have signed him for eight years if he if he would have been willing to do that he wanted him we already recognize you're our team of the future we want you we want you for eight i think he was one less and we ended up at Six years was it? Or five. 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 Hindsight's, five hindsight's twenty twenty, but that was a massive amount of. It was risk. a huge amount. Fifty six games, fifty four games in the NHL, yeah, five by exactly. nine. Exactly. That was a huge amount of yeah. risk because you don't know. Yeah. 
You don't, you don't know. You don't. You've, you don't. You've seen other players that come from the KHL that have a good year that sign a bunch of money and then they don't have the passion to win. Yeah. That's what differentiates yeah, Carell. That's right. Yeah, opinion. the money's not going to change Carell. Right. It's absolutely not going to change. He's going to play no matter and the way he plays the same way all the time, no matter what you're paying him. And he's a rink rat. I mean, you watch yeah. him when the practice is over. He's just out there mm-hmm. screwing around. Yeah. He might as well be a peewee. Have you guys had him on the podcast? No, we're so this is a we're big, gonna say we is, heard this we heard big. you wanted to be on the podcast. Billy sure. said Craig has really been. Well, he's like, Billy's he's on it. Little, I mean, come on. He's a little upset, yeah. and we're like, wow, you know, Craig. We'll yeah. see. Could you look right yeah, in that a senile? Yeah, look right in that <laughs> camera, Craig, and say, Krill, I would like you to go on the wild. We're coming for you, Krill. We appreciate everything you do all the time. <laughs> including <laughs> including if you want to come on their podcast definitely do it i did it all right your turn you can bring your translator tag, tag you're it you can bring zuki we don't care yeah, yeah. bring zuki um, yeah it's it will happy hour two for once we uh sure. that's that's outstanding um hey so our premise with the pod is bringing some positivity to minnesota sports seeing the glass is half full and billy's certainly a half full guy so i want you to close your eyes a little bit imagine we win the cup and it's everyone's going crazy on west 7th it's just the greatest it's warm out what do you do with your day with the cup if the wild won the cup what i'm sure you've thought about this where are you going you say win 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 win. the wild Uh, win the cup hey can we cut that cut the if i don't know i'd like to apologize to you mr leopold but where would you go win we win the stanley cup well i i'm going to get it for more than one day (laughs) (laughs) so i'm I'm thinking a little bigger than than you may be thinking but there are places that i i want to take it to our place in lake owen where the whole community are gigantic wild fans the bars are, and it's it's partly because I live there, but also that that's the feed they get is yep. the Minnesota feed, and there. So I'm going to take a Lake Owen. I want to take it to a, the Exuma Islands in the Bahamas. Yes, sir. Where we have a home, and the island there, all the bars, all the restaurants have wild pennants and hangers, and I want to take it down there. Uh, I'm certainly going to take it in Racine and. Uh, Helen and I are going to share our bed with with Stanley one night. Mm. <laughs> that is, you know, that's so, that's just that's a great. You got to wake up and have a bowl of cereal out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. oh yeah, oh for sure. Yeah, I want to have cereal. it as long. I mean, I but, will beg Gary to you know give me a week with it. So I yeah, fly around. The, I, I want to propose another rule that I thought about the other day. You don't necessarily, if your name is on the cup, you can go to any Stanley Cup party. You don't necessarily have to be invited, but if you like catch wind of where it is, you can go. You can just go. That's like, like you your ID. Like you can't bring like a plus one or like an entourage, yeah. but if but you, you specifically mean if, if are your on name, it, if your you name can is go on the cup, any of the parties from a previous cup. Yes. Oh, oh. God, what a great rule. That's awesome. That, that's what I'd like. So, it like, let's be. say you were be. having a party in Exuma. Yeah. Yeah. I Potentially. Just, like, sh- show yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if your name is on the cup. Yeah. 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 Just, like. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I do. Okay. I really do. I like that. I'm changing my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just want to, I'd really just have one more for you. I wonder, do you have owners that, um, you know, are, are like mentors or you like the way they do it. You got, it gets such a range, right? You'll have everything from Jerry's world down in Dallas to Robert Kraft and all these, as you kind of have done this for some time now, are there people that you think do it the right way? And they're maybe mentors or, or friends of yours in ownership? Well, I, all right. So being a mentor and a friend can be two, uh, two different things. Yeah. As I, this is my 25th year in the league. So I'm now, that was official One as of, of the, last night, right? As official as of last night, yeah. you're right. October 10th. Congrats. 1998 years. Uh, was my first game in uh, Nashville, opening night. Um, I, I have friends. One of them, uh, a, a good one, was Rocky Wirtz. And Rocky and I, Rocky in Chicago, um, was uh, we were, on, we were on all the committees, the same committees together, so we would even fly around and you know fly with each other back. And wonderful, wonderful man, really enjoyed and passed away completely unexpectedly uh, at uh, at the age of seventy one this summer. Um, and there are, there are some other owners like that. We'll we'll talk. Um, uh, but I, I find myself now kind of being the the old guy, uh, although I'm not the old guy. I'm the most experienced guy, 
And um, so we get a we get a new owner in the league, like we just got in Ottawa. I'll, you know, I'll send him a note, and I know the guy because he was a part owner in Montreal. And 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 uh, you know, if if you have any questions, if you're you know have anything you want to talk about, feel free to you know give me a call. And there is a lot of that kind of discussion when when a, a, a you know, when the owner in Winnipeg, Mark Chipman, is going to hire a general manager or is looking at it, he asked, we talk about the process that we've gone through, the ones that worked. And there, there's no competition there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, you yeah. s- lead them astray. Well, yeah. we did this. Yeah. We did one interview. Oh, yeah. Each yeah. person, yeah. 10 minutes, that was it. And that was, that was it. Guy. We didn't want to give him much time. <laughs> and you, you hire the guy. It's the one you least expect. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. one that really shines it's out. Best to take a good. flyer. Just that does take a good. flyer. Yeah. But <laughs> there, there are no, we're, you know, we're not competitive off the ice. We're, you know, he wouldn't call me about a player. Uh, but, but it's uh you know it's a it's a it's a good fraternity. There are thirty two of us, and we do talk, and and it's you know it's a good group. To it kind of seems like owners talk to each other, but the first rule of ownership is like Fight Club: you don't talk about ownership. Never. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh about own. Oh, yeah, like other oh, owners. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's right. like the number yeah. one rule: like, you don't talk about. Very it. true. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's great. What's your what's your favorite moment? Like, uh, I think about this too. Like when I played. Like the moment you close your eyes, like your identity piece, your favorite moment. Do you have as the wild owner, like like your favorite moment, like a goal or a playoff series win or something to date that has been like your favorite moment? Well, I, uh, you know, my favorite moments would be the very first game in October 10th of 98. Yeah, that would be cool. That was, uh, an, we lost one to nothing. Um and uh, Barry Trotz and I, Barry was walking, we're walking, connecting each other, and all of a sudden we just give each other a big hug, and you know, and and I just I remember like it was yesterday. I look at him, I get, I go, I guess we're not going 82 and 0, <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed, and it was just a great moment. You know, you're you're with the guy for a year and a half before you have a game, so you know him, and and uh, that was a great moment. The win in in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, overtime win, uh, Niederreiter scores. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, you know, I, I, that game was done. The players had left my suite that were that were that were scratched. They go down to the locker room because they wanted to be there when the when our team likely was going to lose. We were behind with two and a half minutes to go by one goal, and Spurge tied it up, and we went in overtime. They come running back up. You know that I didn't expect it. You know, it was a, and, and it was really awesome. And um, you know, those are the those are the moments that I think I kind of remember the most. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I was googling your history too. Now, did you used to work, or I don't know, have some affiliation with um, an entity that owned the Grand Ole Opry? I was on the board of Gaylord Entertainment Corporation. Yeah. Uh, if you Google me, sometimes they say I own the Grand Ole Opry or something. That's where I was going. I, yeah, with this. yeah, no, I was just on their board, and and that that of course I was in Nashville all the time. So um, no, I well, was on their board. And very interesting. I've got thing. three daughters, and they wanted me to ask you this yeah, yeah. And because there's rumors flying around that the reason Taylor Swift wasn't at the Vikings game, she was in town, but you gave her the big break at the Grand Ole Opry, so she decided to go to lunch with you on Sunday. You went to the Vikings Billy's, game. Billy Sushi. I made Taylor. this whole scenario. You no, know, I, I think told my I th- daughters I'd ask. Yeah, I know you can tell your daughters that that's kind of how it went. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You were making well, friendship bracelets. Yeah, I, we yeah, were. We were making friendship Swifty. bracelets. I'm a yeah. Swifty. Smart. <laughs> I didn't know what a Swifty was until I saw it the other day. On yeah. A, yeah. That's so sure. great. Uh, last one for me. Yes. And I couldn't pass up this opportunity. Uh, Wild on 7th, Mason Shaw's uh, Let's Play Hockey in the playoffs was moving. Legendary. Legendary. And we kind of want to raise the bar on Let's Play Hockey. Yeah. So the podcast wants to just maybe have tryouts, and then we're going to we're gonna get this up where we like set the floor, set the tone to where this is something that people want to hit out of the park. Um, do I have your blessing taking a run <laughs> at, at Wild on 7th taking on Let's Play Hockey? Wow. That was a, that's a... 
really interesting question. So <laughs> let me give let me tell you what you do have my the answer blessing is no. on. No. I no, the answer is not no. I first of all, the Shawzy let's play hockey. How good was that? Was like my heart right. was pounding. Yeah. And I wish I was on the bench because I wanted to jump out there and kick the shit let's out of play. somebody. Yeah. It was great. Oh, it was so good. And uh, I would, well, I think what you're suggesting, because we constantly struggle about who we're going to get to do this. Who yeah. Gonna get, why don't we have, why don't you guys get together and say, on th- this is our game. We're playing this team on this date, uh, January whatever, and we're going to be in control. We want the guy or the lady who will who will do let's play hockey with the most energy yes. that that will get our players yeah. on the bench ready to go and ready to ready to fight. Yeah, nobody loves a one upper, but when it comes to let's play hockey, yeah. we want constant one uppers. Yeah. Absolutely, right? I think that I think it's a great idea, yeah. and and if uh, I think it will work, I don't know why it wouldn't. You know. This maybe we'll say every month we're gonna have a wild on seventh. Is that what? We're yeah, that's, okay. right. that's uh, right. Podcast every month we're gonna have one let's play hockey that you guys are sponsoring. Yes, I like it. Boom. Okay. Car- Boom. Carts, I've it's heard. I've heard this is harder to do than you think. It is gonna be hard. Like it's hard. To, like PJ Fleck had the bar for a while. Yeah. He did a really he did nice a good job. one. Really good. And then Shaw came out. Yeah. You know, crutches. Yeah, and like, he's on the podium. Like, Braveheart. I mean, amazing. So I, I you really got to fire your shot when you have it. I know. You know, one it's of the pressure. one of the Vikings players. Yeah, TJ Hawkinson did a Hawkinson. nice job too. He's Hawkinson. on the podium as well. I think it's those awesome. three. Those yeah. three are the yeah. bar. They are. If They're we can bar. get if we can get somebody else on the podium yeah. this year, yeah. that would be a huge win. Yeah. Let's do it. It's yeah. up to you guys. So, yeah. you know, talk is cheap. It's all about the execution. Oh boy. Make it happen. Wow. All right, now I've applied pressure to myself. Yes, you have. Yeah, that's going to be I would say you take the lead on that one. <laughs> Um, I'll vet candidates with you. Um, anything we didn't ask you that you wanted us to ask you? Anything you want Wild fans to know? We're thrilled you came by. Who's my favorite player? You guys didn't ask me. That. I don't know if you can ask. Well, there's only one in the rafters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Who, well, yeah Nico, Nico, do you, do you answer straight. that question? Yeah, I will. All right. Who's your sure. favorite player on the current Wild team? Shawzy. Oh. Ah, brilliant. Okay. All right. Brilliant. So here's here's how it, that all started. Is uh, last year. Uh, at the you know at the last before the last cut he came into the into our our lunch area and was walking through and literally he thought my name was Craiger okay <laughs> because he had heard my buddies call me Craiger so he walks through he said hey Craiger I said you know I'm wait- waving he goes hi Craiger and Billy was sitting with me and he goes what did he just say? <laughs> he, did he just call me Gregor? <laughs> and Billy started laughing. So obviously he found out that my name was Craig, not Gregor. And then like <laughs> a week later, I'm down in Iowa dropping the puck. And he's the captain on the Iowa team yeah. playing down there. So he comes over to do the faceoff. I'm dropping the puck. And I go, and I go okay, Shawzy, let's win this one. He goes, Okay, Craiger. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> and a week later, or two weeks later, he's up in he's up in uh, St. Paul yeah. on the big sheet, yeah. and I, uh, you know, great story. And he blows his uh, yeah. ACL out. Yeah. I mean, it just. I mean, how do you not love this guy? Yeah. Well, you know, he takes his broken sticks back to his ranch, and they use it to help move the animals. <laughs> and he and so he has these it's, baseball caps. His parents are cattle farmers in no in Canada. Kidding. And his uh, father was upset with him this summer because he stayed here to rehab until they were help down. In the they were down one hand on the ranch. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh, you gotta it's, love that. It's family. like a lost season of Yellowstone, Mason Shaw. <laughs> oh, that it's, is it's unbelievable. That's great. Well, All right, so there's. Hey, did, have you asked Billy that question? Who's his favorite player? I no. don't think we have. I almost didn't even know you could ask that question. We got to be better yeah. at this. I. Uh, that's great. Well, hey, man, we loved having you here. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, thank you for all that you do for the state of hockey and the Minnesota Wild. And yeah. let's kick some ass this season, shall we? I'm with you on that one. I am totally with you. I am ready, excited, pumped. Let's go. There's a go lot wild. Of, there's a lot of meat on this bone. We, I think we got to have you back again. Yeah, that was fun. Could yeah. be. Could yeah. be. Could we got to have you back. There could be a part two. Maybe a playoff preview next year. Oh, I'm already excited. About Love it. Yeah. A okay. mobile podcast record from Craig Sweet with a sat pack in his hand, bleeding from his hand. I'm here to save you. Staple cuts. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, All we're right. here. Thank you. Till it's here. Peace.